Over the past few months, I've been getting a lot of questions about a specific topic in my complete Excel training course on Udemy. And this topic is about Power Pivot and Power Query. There were some adjustments that Microsoft made between the various newer releases that they've made in regards to Excel. In 2010, Microsoft introduced some add-ins called Power Query and Power Pivot. And these were very, very powerful add-ins that you could use to go out and gather data, bring that external data into an Excel document, be able to transform that data, get it to behave and look the way that you want it to, and to be able to take that data and then create a pivot table off of that data. Now, this data could come from multiple different resources, multiple different locations. And you can also take data and marry it together or merge multiple sets of data together all through Power Query. Now when that and again those add-ins came out in 2010. When 2013 came out Microsoft made an adjustment and the add-ins were only available in the Professional Plus edition of Excel. They removed it from the Home and the Student editions. But now in Excel 2016 They've introduced a new set of features that used to be inside the add-ins, Power Query, and brought them into Microsoft Excel 2016. They now call it Get and Transform. So you go out and get data, wherever that data comes from, whether it's from another Excel document or from some external database or wherever it might be, you bring that data into Excel, you transform it, you work with it, you change columns, you change formatting, you can create additional columns, you can do all sorts of stuff. And then you ultimately, you take that data into Excel and you begin to work with it directly inside of Excel. Git and transform. So I wanna show you an example of using Git and transform inside of Excel 2016. Take a look. Now open in front of you, I've got a simple little workbook. It's got two worksheets inside of it. It's got one here called Customer Info and another one called Order Info. And I'm just going to use these as the examples. These are just simple little lists inside of Excel. Now, the data between the two worksheets actually can interact with one another. Meaning, here I got Customer Info, I've got a customer, got lots of customers actually, I think about 89 customers in this list. But one in particular, I've got ALFKI as a customer ID. Now that customer has placed some orders. That's where the order tab comes into play. So I go down to order info and on here you can see that there's a set of records that match that same customer ID, ALFKI. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Now what I'd like to do is I want to take both of these lists, currently they're completely separate lists, right? two different tabs down there, and I want to merge them together. I want to be able to connect the customer with their specific orders. Well, how do we do that? I guess if we're using just plain old Excel, you may have a couple ways to do this. Some of us might think, well, maybe I'll go do a VLOOKUP and I'll have a good look to see if there's anything matching. Or maybe I got to create a macro to help me match up these records. Well, no, we don't have to do either of those two things. We can use Git and Transform to take these two sets of data, two separate pieces of data, bring them together into one data source through a merge feature, part of the Git and Transform feature in Excel 2016. Take a look. So I'm going to open up just a brand new workbook here, just a brand new blank workbook. And you know what, just, just, just for fun, I'm going to close out of the data file that has my data within it. So I'm going to close that out. I can actually keep it open, but I'm going to get rid of it. All right, so now I'm going to go up to my data tab here inside of Excel 2016 and we've now got this set of commands called git and transform. So you got a handful of different ways that you can go out and get data. We can build a new query, we can pull from an existing table, we can get stuff from recent sources. Underneath new query you've got a handful of different technology and different locations that you can pull data from whether it's from an existing file, such as an Excel file or a CSV file, maybe it's from another database or it's some web environment, lots of different places that you can go out and grab data. Here I'm gonna go from file, I'm gonna go from an Excel workbook, and I'm gonna go find that example that I had opened just a, just a moment ago, that customers and that orders 
a workbook that had those two different worksheets inside of it. So I'll grab that. It's going to ask me, well, I'm going to open this up and well, what do you want to get from it? Well, I'm going to grab customer info. There it is. Remember ALFKI? There it is right there. I'm going to go ahead and load it. So let's just take just a moment. It's creating a connection into my new workbook. It's creating a connection to that other data source. Now, this is just the customer info. There's 92 rows inside there. So I'll put it on sheet two. I really don't need sheet one anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. Uh, but that's just one data source. Now I'm going to go grab the other data source. So I'm going to go back up to data, uh, new query from file. I'll go grab it from the workbook. Same workbook I got it from before. But this time, as it opens it up and wants to create a connection to there, I'm going to grab the order info, and I'll load that. Again, give it just a moment here. It's going to load that data up. All right, looking good. So I'm going to rename these just so I can keep track of them here. This one this is, is uh, customer info. This one will be order info. All right, and I've got my workbook queries window over here on the left where I can see my two different connections, my two different queries, customers and my order. Now, for some reason, this workbook queries window doesn't open up for you. You can go back to data and you can turn on show queries. And it's really, it's, it's allowing you to see your two different queries, get a preview of it, and also use it as navigation to jump back and forth between whatever queries you've got inside of this active workbook. Now, I'm looking at my customer info one, and I, I see something that I kind of goofed up on. My second row here is actually my column headers, customer ID, company name, and so on. Uh, I noticed on my order info, it didn't do that. It, it used my actual headers as my first row. So that's actually the first thing I want to fix here is I want to get those headers to actually be my headers and not get Excel to pick up on these goofy little generic header names here. This may happen to you, it may not, but what I'm going to do to fix that is I'll come over and find that query, customer info. I'm going to give it a double click. Here we have it. It's now opened it up inside the query editor. Uh, inside of here you can see I've got generic headers there, column one, two, three, and so on. Uh, row one is my actual headers. So there's an option here on the home tab uh, for use first row as headers. So I'm just going to give that a click. And I've now got customer ID, company name, and so on up there where it belongs. So I'll go ahead and close and load that. Kind of just save those changes. And there it is now. Got my, my actual headers as my headers inside of my uh, query that I've now built. All right, so now I'm kind of back to the same story I was talking about earlier. There's still two different worksheets, right? Two separate ones, customer info and order info. But I want to put them together, right? I want to merge them together, and I want to be able to see, hey, ALFKI, remember that customer? I want to be able to take that customer and match them up with their orders. And then ultimately, perhaps I want to create a pivot table based off the data um, that I'm querying here. So let me get back to customer info. Um, I'm going to reopen that query editor that we were just taking a look at. So I'm going to double click customer info here. This reopens our query editor. And there's all sorts of goodies in here. This is definitely something that we should spend some time expanding upon. But for right now, I'm going to give you just the basics inside here. So I've got my, my one source in here. This is the customer info. Uh, I want to be able to merge this with that order info. So still looking here at the Home tab, over on the right, I've got Merge Queries. So I'm going to go into Merge Queries. I'm actually going to go a little drop down arrow here. And I've got a couple of options. I can merge queries. So I can say, hey, take this query here and merge it with the other one. Um, but it'll take that other query and merge it with this query right here, okay. which is great. Maybe that's what I want. But what I'd like to do is have my customers and my orders as two separate queries. And then I want to create a third query that'll bring both of them together. So I'm going to say merge queries as new. And this is total preference, just depending on how you want to approach your data and how you want to present it. So first step, there's my original data source customer info. There's all the columns in there and all the data. And I'm going to say I want to merge it with the order info. But now Excel needs to know, well, how are the two going to merge? How are they connected to one another? Well, it's through the customer ID. 
So I'll grab customer ID here. I'm going to come down to my order info, I'll grab customer ID. And now it knows, okay, well, that's the common field, common value between here, so I can know how to match up the customer with their orders. But what is it that you want to see? And now I get to pick the join kind or join type. So here it looks like it default to a left outer. I'm going to go to an inner only. And once again, this is a preference. This is something you're going to need to determine on, well, what is it that I'm trying to view here? In this case, with an enter only, I'm going to get back records where there's a customer ID in the orders table, or excuse me, in the customers table that matches a customer ID in the order table. Only where the two match. That's what I'm going to get back. If I had left it at a left outer, okay, left outer, it would say grab everything from the customer table and the matches from the order table, but also everything else everything from here everything from here and match it up with what's here that's what we get back so we could potentially get back customers that don't have any orders does that make sense everything from here and the matches over here think about that for a moment now i'm just going to do an inner join get back just where the two match that's what i want to see so i'll hit okay this is going to create a new data source for me, a new query. I'm going to rename it just so I can keep in track of everything. I'm going to call this customer orders. Now, I've got a new column in here. They called it new column, and it's called table. There's just table in there. Let's actually give that a new name. Let's give that a double click. We'll call this orders. Now, what it's going to show me here is this first customer, ALFKI. Remember that one? If I click where it says table, it's going to give me a preview down below where I can see those six orders for that customer. And now I can go from record to record and be able to see any matching orders for those customers. And oh, I went a step too far. I'm going to cancel out of orders here. I just click on the table, just on the table once. Get a preview of it. A-N-T-O-N's got roughly, what is that, nine orders in there. There's A-R-O-U-T that's got several more, and so on. So it's made that connection between these two query sources. Pretty slick. But right now I'm just seeing this inside the query editor. I want to ultimately bring this back to Excel, and I want to be able to create a pivot table based off of both of these data sources that I've now merged together. So i got one more step I need to do here. In order for me to see the actual columns, the values that are found inside this table here back to Excel. I'm going to grab the new order column that I've created. I'm going to go up to transform, top of my screen, and once again, all sorts of stuff in here, ways that you can transform your data, get it to behave and look the way that you need it to. I'm going to go over to structured columns, and I'm going to expand that column. I'm going to expand the table column so that I can see all the information that belongs in that orders table. So I'll expand it. This will take just a moment. There's all the columns and I kind of cherry pick and you know kind of pick and choose which columns I want and what I don't want. For now I'm just going to hit OK. Give it a moment here. And now I've got all the columns. There's those six breakdowns for that ALF key customer and then all the order information for that customer. So I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and go back to home. I'm going to close and load. All right, I've got a new sheet here. Let's just rename this. Let's call it customer, oops, customer orders. And this contains everything. Every customer and all the orders that that customer's placed. All merged together into one list. Now, I'm going to go create a pivot table. Insert pivot table. I'll just leave the defaults. Here's my little pivot table. Got nothing really in there just yet, but... I'm going to go grab a couple things here. Let's say, and just so we can see here, I want to get uh, the customer ID. And I want to know how many orders they've had. So I'll grab order ID, which came from the orders table. Right now, it's want to sum the order. I don't want to sum it. So I'm going to go change that. Let's go to value field settings. I'll say I want to count it. So now I can see that the customer, Alf key, placed six orders. Uh, A and ATR place four orders and so on. 
Well, maybe I also want to know how much freight we spent. Here's a sum of freight for each of those customers and their orders that they've used. So now using get and transform within Excel 2016, and remember this came from the data tab, got your get and transform section. You can go out and get data from multiple sources if needed, maybe it's just one source, but it could be multiple sources. Merge them together through a common field, a column, com common value, and then ultimately start analyzing that data, summarizing that data, using pivot tables and lists and formulas, all of that, bringing that external data into one spot for you. I want to encourage you to try this out. That was just kind of a quick preview of, of Git and Transform. There's definitely much more you can do there, but try it out. Download the exercise right down below. You can go grab it right here on the blog uh, and download it and try it out. Follow back through the video if you need to. Thanks a lot.